Thanks, Blaise. It's amazing how many of you have been to um, the UK already, so that's perfect. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Erica Stewart and I am the Trade Engagement Executive for the Visit Britain Australia and New Zealand team. Firstly, I just want to thank you all so much for listening in today and a very big thank you to Blaze and the Rail Europe team for having me. It's been a very challenging time for many recently and especially for the tourism sector. While we may not be able to welcome you with open arms just yet to Britain, We've been sharing dream worthy destination ideas and virtual experiences ready for when you can take your next trip overseas. Australia continues to be an important inbound market for Britain with more than 1 million visits coming from Australia to the UK contributing 1.2 billion pounds into the UK visitor economy annually. So with that in mind, I'll be taking you through a short 30 minute tour of Britain to make sure that Britain is top of mind for you all. Let's get started. Britain is compact in size, especially when compared to Australia, and is bursting with experiences and charm for visitors to discover boundless hidden gems. Did you know that it only takes 14 and a half hours to drive from the top of the UK's most, most northern point to the very bottom of Southwest England? There are also 2,500 train stations throughout Britain, making it easy to get around, and, and for example, it's only uh, approximately four and a half hours to get from London all the way up to Edinburgh in Scotland. So such a short time to do that. And in fact, you're never more than two hours away from the coast or an hour away from the countryside by car, wherever you are in Britain. So as I mentioned, there are 2,500 train stations throughout Britain. The National uh, Rail Network map here shows how easy it is to reach any destination in Britain by train. There are 4,000 trains in Britain and 26 train companies that operate them. And a fun fact is that the longest single journey on one train is from Aberdeen in Scotland to Penzance in Southwest England, and it takes 13 hours and 20 minutes. The BritRail part is the most convenient and cost-effective way to travel Britain. Uh, by train as it's competitively priced against single rail journeys. It allows unlimited travel uh, within England, Scotland and Wales with various zone passes available. And now all Brit Rail Pass tickets are available as e-tickets on your mobile device as well. Uh, did you know that the Brit Rail Pass was introduced by British Rail in the 1960s as a means of encouraging overseas visitors to explore Britain by rail? And this map here shows the various zones I was just talking about, um, including the Southwest Pass of England and then the three specific Scottish passes that are available as well. Tickets can be purchased as flexi passes, allowing for travel uh, for as many days as you choose within one month, or consecutive passes, allowing for travel uh, for as many days as you choose continuously in a row. And a top tip is that the BritRail and the BritRail England passes can be used on the Gatwick Express the Heathrow Express and the Stansted Express as well. Now I'll just move um, on to Britain's key regions in a bit more detail. And we start off in one of, if not the greatest cities in the world, and it's of course London. One of the world's most visited cities, England's buzzing capital is a must visit with so much to offer from magnificent history and culture to cutting edge fashion and food. Now, we all know the usual London bucket list items, such as visiting its famous royal attractions like Buckingham Palace and changing of the guards, jumping on a hop on, hop off bus to get your bearings around the city, admiring Big Ben and Houses of Parliament, and not to forget all the brilliant food, shopping and theatre in the West End. But here we have our insider list on some of our favourite experiences to do in London. So number one here, we've got zip around a classic Mini Cooper on a small car big city tour. Number two, find your perfect British souvenir at Portobello Market or a vintage bargain at Spitalfield Markets. Number three, if you've seen all the West End classics, see what's on Off West End, a vibrant hub of new independent theatre shows not shown on West End. Number four, get a 360 degree bird's eye view at of London City at the top of the Shard and maybe even a cocktail or two at Sky Garden, 
which is London's highest public garden at 35 storeys high. And number five, of course, treat yourself to an afternoon high tea with a twist this time at um, Sketch, which is in Mayfair. And now Southwest England. Key destinations in Southwest England include UNESCO World Heritage listed Bath, famed for its splendid Roman spa and elegant Georgian architecture. It's only an hour and 30 minutes by train to Bath from London, and then an extra 10 minutes from Bath uh, by train and you'll get to Bristol. Bristol is loved for its independent spirit and alternative vibe. It boasts culture, creativity, and an impressive maritime legacy. And then located in the far southwest of Britain is Cornwall. Cornwall is home to a dramatic coastline and stunning seaside villages with a number of unique tourist attractions. Sandy beaches and rugged moors make the county of Devon one of Britain's most charming holiday destinations with a jaw-dropping UNESCO World Heritage coastline of Jurassic Coast. And one of the best ways to explore Southwest England is via the Great West Way touring route. The 200 kilometer journey takes you through beautiful countryside, quaint villages and historic towns, starting in either London or Bristol. You can see here on the map. The route passes through key destinations and attractions such as Bath, the Cotswolds, Royal Windsor and prehistoric Stonehenge, one of England's most iconic monuments. The picturesque region of southeast and the east of England is famed for its manicured gardens and seaside towns. Key destinations in southeast and the east of England include Brighton, a city that has it all, from laid back beach living to legendary nightlife and only one hour by train from London. Canterbury and Kent, known as the Garden of England and renowned for its rolling green hills and vast vineyards. Medieval Norwich is England's UNESCO City of Literature. Windsor, rich in history and royal tradition. And did you know that the Queen has six official residences, one of which is Windsor Castle, which is only 40 minutes from London and is the oldest, largest occupied castle in the world. Moving on to central England, which encompasses Birmingham, the second largest city in Britain. Also Oxfordshire, home to Britain's oldest university and only one hour from London by train. The Cotswolds, renowned for its chocolate box cottages and winding country lanes. Stratford-upon-Avon, where William Shakespeare was born. Nottingham, made famous by Robin Hood. And Cambridge, home to the prestigious Cambridge University. A fun fact is that Birmingham has 56 kilometres of waterways and more kilometres of canals than Venice. In fact, a great way to explore central England is via its waterways. There's nothing more relaxing or comfortable than a leisurely cruise on a canal boat, peppered with some top sightseeing spots and of course some pub lunches. There are lots of destinations to discover in Northern England. And we'll start in Manchester, which is only two hours by train from London. Manchester is rich in art, heritage, and is as proud of its music scene as it is of its world famous football teams. For music buffs, Liverpool is a must. The city that gave us, a, gave us the Beatles, Liverpool is one of Britain's most dynamic and vibrant cultural centres. Then the 2000 year old city of York, home to one of the largest cathedrals in, Nor in Northern Europe, York Minster, Newcastle, the, home, the great home of the Geordies is full of art, culture, and of course, it's legendary nightlife. The most northern county of England, Northumberland, is full of dramatic scen scenery and stunning seascapes with breathtaking and unspoiled coastlines. Hadrian's Wall, as you can see across the map, built by, Roman, built by the Roman army on the orders of Emperor Hadrian, stretches 117 kilometers across the north of England, much of it is across the top of Northumberland, and you can walk its entire length from coast to coast. The Peak District is Britain's first national park and spreads over five counties. It's also home to some of the best historic houses and stately homes, 
including Chatsworth House, Haddon Hall and Renishaw Hall. And the Lake District National Park, best known for its stunning lakes, mountains and picturesque stone-built villages. The Lake District has long been an inspiration for artists and poets alike. And a really cool fact, which is probably my favourite, Annick Castle in Northumberland starred in the Harry Potter films and is where you can learn to ride a broomstick, just like in the films, which is awesome. And Scotland. Scotland has so much to offer, from the highlands to the buzzing cities of Edinburgh and Glasgow, from hiking majestic mountains to wandering pristine beaches. Look beyond the bagpipes for a Scotland you'll never forget. The diversity of natural and architectural landscape between city, countryside and coast across the region means there's an abundance of things to see and do. As mentioned before, the train journey from London to Edinburgh is approximately four and a half hours. Famous for its castles, clans and some seriously excellent festivals, Edinburgh is a little city with a big cultural heart. And then only 50 minutes by train from Edinburgh and you'll reach Glasgow voted one of the friendliest cities in the world, Scotland's biggest city is a must-see spot for nightlife, culture and cuisine. The Highlands really is the Scotland of your imagination. Think big skies, mind-blowing landscapes, superb food and hospitable people and you've got the Scottish Highlands. Did you know that Scotland is made up of 790 islands of which 130 of them are inhabited? Finally, we have glorious Wales, known around the world for its natural beauty and fairy tale castles. Cardiff is the Welsh capital and key gateway to exploring the country's natural wonders, including its three national parks, um, Brecon Beacons, Snowdonia and Pembrokeshire National Park. This little capital city of Cardiff has a huge heart. It's famous for its historic castle, gleaming Cardiff Bay, iconic rugby stadium and Victorian shopping arcades. Swansea is the second largest city in Wales and it sits on the eight kilometre sweep of Swansea Bay and it's an ideal base for exploring the southwest of Wales and that's where Pembrokeshire National Park is. The stunning coast of Pembrokeshire is full of dramatic cliffs, golden bays and wonderful wildlife. The National Park covers 620 square kilometres of spectacular landscape around Wales' southwest. Brecon Beacons National Park in mid Wales is a fantastic place for an active holiday with superb walking, mountain biking and horse riding trails, as well as caves, forests and historic canals. Northern Wales is easily accessible from Northern England uh, from cities such as Liverpool and Manchester. In North Wales, you'll find Snowdonia National Park. Dominated by the impressive Snowdonia mountain range, a visit to the National Park reveals picturesque villages, fast flowing waterfalls, and a coastline of fine sandy beaches. And then moving on to the picture perfect town of Port Merion. It's in the style of an Italian village with pastel colored village, villas, piazzas, and swaying cypress trees. The best way to see these key destinations is Wales, in Wales is to explore the three national touring routes through the heart of Wales that form the Wales Way. And these three um, consist of the Cambrian Way, the Coastal Way and the North Wales Way. And just a fun fact to tie um, this all in together and for Wales is that Wales has more than 600 castles, which is more per square mile than any other country in the world, which is awesome. So Wales is definitely a must-see visit when you visit Britain as well. So that's the short um, whistle-stop tour around Britain. Um, I hope you learned a bit there and I just want to thank you again for your time. Uh, this slide here shows my contact details um, along with a link to our trade website where you can sign up to our monthly trade newsletter um, and also a link to our online training platform Brit Agent. Uh, so thank you so much again and I'll pass back over to Blaze. Uh, thank you so much, Erica. Uh, that was a lovely tour of uh, Great Britain. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I learned a lot myself. Um, of course, now it's time for the Q&A session. So feel free to use the button below um, 
to answer to ask any questions that we'll um, answer. And I'll all also launch our quiz. Um, one second, uh, so you can try your test your knowledge. So that's going to come up in just a sec. There we go. So quiz should be popping up on your screens uh, right now. Uh, we'll, we'll give you plenty of time to answer all the questions in the quiz. And of course, if any of the questions come up, feel free to uh, use the Q&A function. Um, and I do hope everyone's doing okay. Um, so I'm based in Melbourne, Victoria, which you know right now is a bit of a hot spot. I'm all uh, well and safe. But it does, since we're talking about the UK, this does remind me of a UK themed joke about COVID-19. <laughs> you probably heard it that um, COVID-19 and um, Australia remind you of Spice Girls. Everybody's doing their best except Victoria. So <laughs> a bit of humor to kick things off. And, and that's the funny thing about the webinars because they're very one way. Um, so whenever you, ten, you tell a joke, you don't really know how it landed. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Don't worry. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for laughing. Yeah, Erica, you made it less awkward for sure. Um, so if anyone doesn't have a quiz, uh, you do need to be accessing um, Zoom through the app, um, either on your phone or in your computer. If you're going through the browser, I believe that the quiz does not pop up. Um, so, and I do see that uh, quite a few of you have voted already. Um, so if it's not showing up, you do have to be on um, on a Zoom app, having something installed, exactly. Um, all right, I see we have uh, one of the first questions pop up. Oh, actually, it's not a question. It's just a comment that the um, webinar was very informative. Thank you, Shelley. Um, Thank you. Just before, ah, uh, there we go. So um, does the rail pass cover all the trains? Um, so I, I can answer from my perspective, Erica, if you'll have anything to add after mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, generally it does. So it covers all the national rail companies. Obviously there are some scenic and luxury trains that are not covered. Um, it even covers some sleeper trains, but you do have to uh, pay for the um, sleeper surcharge, but all the basic stuff um, is covered. Um, and the good thing about the UK is that most trains don't require seat reservations, so you can just hop on the train whenever you want with a pass. And this applies both to BritRail and URL passes. They cover the same amount of trains. Um, so that's, did you have anything, would you add anything to that, Erica? I would just say if um, you're looking to travel in peak hour times um, and you want to ensure that you get on the train, um, I would reserve your seat in advance, but otherwise you're exactly right. You, you don't have to, you can just jump on. Yep, exactly. Um, so there are actually two questions about all the different rail passes that are available in the UK. Um, so yeah, at, uh, it, we just had a look at the map at a glance. It can seem a little bit confusing. So there's mm -hmm. different types of passes covering different regions. Um, so that you, obviously you have like a couple of passes covering Scotland. Then you got like um, England only pass. Oh, there we go. I think I'll um, go back. we're gonna we're actually gonna go back to the map. So that's gonna be a little bit more helpful. Um, one second. Almost there. Almost there. There we go. <laughs> oh, there, there we go. Yeah. So all the different colors, um, they're different passes. Um, so the Southwest will cover only the yellow lines mm -hmm. or is that the London Plus or the London Plus is the area around London. Then it's you have the, the Scottish area Highlands. The Plus. Exactly. Um, and then a Britwell England just covers the, you know, an entire country of England. Um, so it really depends on where your clients are traveling. Uh, if they're doing the whole UK, that just the regular Britwell Brit Pass is the best bet. But if you know that they're just in part of the um, part of the UK, then um, you know some of the regional passes will be more applicable. I do find that a lot of those like really small ones are not too popular because a lot of the Aussie travelers will um, travel to more than just one region, so they'll go to either like a Britrail Pass or Britrail England Pass. Those two are the most popular. And if they're if they're coming in from Europe, uh, then a URL Pass is a good option as well, as it will cover. Uh, all of this. So URL Pass is the entire um, European continent plus whatever BritRail Pass includes. So hopefully that uh, answers because I think there were two questions of these. Um, so I'll just push those out. Uh, the Jacobite train is not included in the pass. Um, so the Jacobite train is the steam train that travels from Glasgow up to the northwest part of Scotland and it's on mm -hmm. the 
famous viaduct that you saw probably in Harry Potter's, uh, in the second Harry Potter movie, I believe. Um, and that one is an extra activity um, that you can also book through us, so we can do that. Uh, but other than that, if you just want to have the experience of that uh, viaduct, you, you can just take a regular Scott Rail train as well, and that is covered on the pass. Uh, so you can still experience the viaduct without paying extra for the um, uh, Jacobite train. So I hope that helps. Um, Erica, did you have anything else to add in terms of no, Jacobite train? No, that's it. Yeah, it's a beautiful scenic journey. Definitely recommended. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, all right. Um, Shelly was asking for a PDF of this. Uh, I will send, uh, so there's going to be a follow-up email uh, and we're going to um, have a recording, of course, and then I'll send in some links to um, our information page about the UK. So you'll be able to look, um, you'll see the map and see all the different options with BritRail. So I hope that will help. Um, there we go. Um, is it easy to collect your tickets at the train station specifically for point to point tickets? Yeah, that's relatively easy. Um, so a lot of the tickets are ticket on delivery. So it means that you get a PNR number that you then use to pick up the ticket at the station. Uh, we do provide instructions for that, but it's a fairly straightforward process. Uh, if you do have a BritRail or a URL pass, uh, you get that before your departure. Um, so you get it in, while you're in Australia or New Zealand, uh, which means that uh, you don't have to actually worry about picking up anything. You just have to activate your pass at the station. So that's a fairly easy process. Mm -hmm. um, perfect. Um, let's see. Uh, can a customer pay extra for first class travel? Absolutely. So all the passes come in first and second class um, options. I'd say that most of the Australian travelers and New Zealand travelers would travel in first class. It also makes it easier when it comes to getting a seat, especially during peak hours, because um, obviously if you don't have a reservation, uh, then getting a seat in first class, it's much easier. So um, the, the passes are obviously a little bit more expensive when it comes to first class travel, but if, if, if you get a pass and calculate how much it costs you per day, it's not that big of a difference. Um, we're not talking about difference, you know, like when you upgrade from a second from economy to business in, 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 an, air, in an airplane, it's, a, it's, it's not that big of a difference. So most, most of the travels will go first class anyway. Um, okay, uh, is there luggage room above the seats or at the end of the carriages? Um, that is correct. Um, I think different companies, I, know, I, I don't know, Erica, if you have a little bit more experience with, with that, but I think different companies have different sort of configurations. Oftentimes there's room above the seats or at the end of the carriage, just like with most trains in Europe. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have a yeah. bit more of a personal experience with that. Yeah, I mean, most trains have um, a luggage section at the beginning or the end of each carriage. Um, so the, the small section above your seat um, is usually just for overhead um, backpacks and things like that. But you're, there's definitely space for luggage um, in each carriage. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, so that one is easy. Um, all right, so a uh, question. Traveling from the East Coast... Um, example, send bees where there isn't a train station. Does the pass include buses to connect to trains? I don't think it does, right? I think it's only trains that it um, it allows um, yeah. travel on. So that's the question there. Luckily, in most places that because the train network is so expensive, um, it's usually most of the most important destinations are covered quite well. Um, all right, London Plus Pass. Is this recommended for clients staying outside London, for example, Surrey, to travel into London daily on BritRail? Um, yeah, that could be a potential. Uh, we, what we always do is, because we, we have access to the uh, cheaper advanced fares as well on all the rail services. So it's always worth just calculating what's better. And oftentimes if you know, if they're traveling more than, you know, two or three times, it's, it's often worth just getting the pass. So that's something you just calculate and see what routes they're on and then check what's the cheapest pass that would be eligible for that. Um, I hope, hope that helps. Um, okay. Um, I'm, I'm surprised, like uh, most of the other webinars, a lot of the questions were actually destination related. And this time it's all about trains, which of course, you know, I'm very happy about. Um, 
again, uh, a question from Tina, what is the best pass to use for London Underground? Uh, so none of the passes cover the London Underground, so that would be separate. So you just get an Oyster card, um, either pay as you go or you get one of the um, day passes or week passes or, um, and you can get Oyster cards through us as well. So we actually ship them physically to you uh, before you leave as well. Um, Eric, anything to add there? No, just that the um, the tube is such an easy way to get around London and it's really um, fast and effective and you'll never be waiting for a tube to come. There's one every minute. So yeah, it's a really great way to get around London city itself. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. Okay, this is a question that I don't think we'll be able to uh, give a positive answer to uh, from Susan. Can you please beam me up Star Trek style so I can visit now? I miss London so much. <laughs> so do I. So do so, I. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Susan, I'm sorry. I don't think we can quite do that. Um, so once we do, we'll obviously offer that option. Um, I don't think um, Brit Rail Pass includes um, teleportation. Not yet. <laughs> um, and there's a camp, uh, there's a comment from Sarah saying that a lot of the lines in first class also have free Wi Fi and USB PowerPoint charging ports. Um, Correct. Yeah. So that's definitely a good comment as well. Um, question for Shelly Can you book luggage on the trains instead of carrying it with you? I don't think there's a service, at least not managed by the railways. Maybe there's a private company that can do that, but I don't think. Do you know anything about no, that? No, I don't think that you can book that separately that I'm aware of. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yep. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of questions also in the, um, in the chat. So I'll just check that now. Um, yep. Yeah, so we'll send a link to all the passes and all the informations out in the follow-up email. So that's all ready to go. Um, so you'll be able to um, refer back and, and just get more information about the passes. Okay, there's a question for me. Um, where is your accent from? We're all wondering in the office. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm, I'm Slovenian, uh, so, uh, but I don't think my accent sounds very Slovenian actually. So um, hope that answers it. Um, anyway, um, in Wales, oh, sorry. What are the three tourist routes? I missed it. Uh, maybe Erica, you can answer that. Yep, so they are, it's the Wales way and it's the Cambrian way the North Wales Way and um, the Central Wales Way. So I can also send a link to those and then the national touring routes um, that can be done um, mostly by self-drive, um, which are very recommended for seeing all the hotspots in Wales. Okay, perfect. Um, and there's a couple of comments from people saying that it's very easy to pick up the tickets as well. Um, mm -hmm. So again, a little bit of um, um, popular vote on that it's very easy to do so. Um, all right. Um, and then there's a question from Pat. Can you repeat which passes allow train um, the trains from the airport? So Gatwick, Heathrow and Stansted Express? Yeah, that's the Brit Rail and the Brit Rail England Pass. There we go. So Brit Rail, the, the, the biggest one and the Brit Rail uh, England Pass. Perfect. Um, question from Helen. Are there food carts on trains? Yeah, there are on um, quite a few of them, actually. Um, I can't guarantee all of them, but most of the trains, especially the ones that I've traveled on, yes, there are food carts on the trains. Okay, perfect. Um, and question from Tina, do you need photo ID for these underground passes? So I'm assuming you're referring to Oyster carts. I don't think you, I mean, generally you don't need to, but I feel like if you would have a concession or a special card, they might check mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Um, but I, when I used, I just used a regular Oyster card that's not tied to an any to a name or anything, and I've never gotten checked um, yep. for ID. So it's yep. just a regular. It's like um, Mikey in Melbourne or um, yeah, Opal in Sydney. Yeah, Opal in Sydney or AT Hop card in Auckland. Uh, so it's very similar to that. Um, okay, um, just checking if there's any other questions. We had quite a few. Um, one second. I'm happy as well if anyone wants to send me any separate questions. I'm more than happy yeah. to help out. And same with us, if, if it's anything directly related to, to the trains, we of course can help. Um, do Oyster carts expire? I don't think they do. I think they're valid indefinitely, um, yeah. which is a good thing. So if you've, especially if you've got one for your client right now and um, they couldn't travel, they can just use them anytime at a later, at a later point. Um, does Brit Rail Pass include Northern Ireland? It does not. Um, 
and that's again comes to the difference between UK and Great Britain because UK is uh, Great uh, Northern Ireland and Great Britain, whereas Great yeah. Britain is without. So that's because it's Brit Rail, it doesn't include Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, that wouldn't be. But the Irish Eurail Pass includes Northern Ireland. So if if you're thinking of traveling in the island of Ireland, that's definitely an option uh, there as well for you. Um, Let's see if there's any other questions. Um, yeah, so the, 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 there is a good point about pricing. Uh, since we currently, uh, we're all working remotely from home, so our office is closed. And since most of the rail passes are paper tickets, we're unable to book or sell them at this point, which means that a lot of the prices are not available on the website. Um, but I'll send, I'll send some basic information through um, that will hope you, hopefully give you some, some indication of that. Uh, perfect. Um, uh, okay, so Jenny's saying that there's a bit of a issue with an uh, with the audio. Uh, so just wanted to check: is anyone else experiencing audio issues? Um, if you are, you can just raise raise a hand or speak up in the chat. Um, hopefully, okay. So it seems like um, sorry, Jenny. I'm not sure um, what the issue is, but it looks like most most of the agents are able to hear. Um, and and as, as for the quiz, so the quiz does pop up, but only if you are on one of the Zoom apps. So either on your phone or on your computer, you just have to download the actual Zoom app. Uh, so if you're joining through the browser, that might not pop up. Um, so sorry, sorry about that. I do see that most of you have um, entered the quiz. So that's good to see that most of the attendees have entered. Um, okay. Um, any other questions from anyone? If not, we'll wrap things up. I'm just going to end the poll. So hopefully everybody's done. Um, and again, we'll, we'll send a um, follow up email with who the winner is with, with all the links and everything else that comes with it. Um, Erica, anything else from your end that you'd like to add before we no, wrap up? Um, no, thank you so much for having me. And thanks everyone again for listening in. It's been great. Um, all your questions have been fantastic. So yeah, please do send through if you've got anything else. Perfect. All right. Uh, thanks again to all the agents um, joining us today from Australia and New Zealand. Um, and we have our next webinar on next Thursday, so a week from now, and we are going to be talking about VRL in Canada. So we're going back to Canada, so that's going to be an interesting one as well. So hopefully you'll all join, and I'll include a link to register in the, uh, in the email as well if you haven't yet done so. All right, perfect. Again, thank you everyone. Have a great one, and I'll see you hopefully next week on Thursday. Thank you. Bye, thank you.